For me, animation is a practice that is both creative and laborious. But it's not just simply a lot of work. And it's not just simply mindless work. You're doing things like brainstorming, making decisions, trying to figure out a problem, and wearing different hats, aka switching gears. It's not something that a lot of people talk about, and advice that you'll hear is that people should work smarter, not harder, schedule better, figure out your motivation, discipline, hire help. I mean, they're all valid, but the thing that I'm going to talk about is something that being aware of it changed my creative process. And did it change it for the better? Well, I get burned out less. Hey guys, it's Sadiq Patua, and I'm an animator and storyboard artist within the animation industry. But on top of that, I do a lot of personal projects, passion projects, and things on my own and for myself. A lot of the productions and projects that I'm involved with is very creative. And on top of that, it's laborious as hell. There's a lot of steps, a lot of time, effort, and energy just to get something done. And based on my experience working for the industry and working for myself, there's something that I personally noticed about creative work, creative labor, and once I've noticed this, it kind of changed the way I work, where I can plan better, not get burned out, and still remain efficient and consistent. Now in the past, I've talked about productivity strategies, I've talked about motivation and goals and things like that, but here's something that I wanna talk about that's not really discussed as much, which is the creative labor aspect of it. And if you plan to do this stuff long term, being aware of these two gears will help you big time. So let's look at the word creative labor and let's divide that by two. So we get creative and labor at two different opposing sides. Within the creative process, what does it mean to be creative and what does it mean just to be laborious? What does it mean to be creative? To me, it's like coming up with an idea or maybe a few ideas. It's the brainstorming part. And then next is probably problem solving, trying to figure out a question that you came up with, a problem or a subject matter you want to explore and trying to figure that out, what it means to you and how do you approach it in a creative project. It's decision making and it's a process of elimination because for someone like me, making decisions is hard. And having to start eliminating choices and finally making a decision requires a lot of good judgment and logical thinking and gut feeling all at the same time. There's the whole process of exploration and experimentation as you try to figure things out in the creative stage. Seeing what works, what doesn't work based on circumstances. So things like budget, things like time, to me, brainstorming is a very involved process. It requires me to have the most attention involved with it. So next is the labor side. So the labor side I would describe is the work that we don't want to do, but it's the work that we need to do to get the results that we want. But I guess the benefit of this is that you're just doing the work, you're just moving forward. It's just a matter of time and energy. There's little to no creativity. Depending on how you view it, it can be a good thing. For me, I kind of like it because it allows me to shut my brain off as I just work. But you've already figured out what you want to do with this project, how you're going to go about it, how you've planned it out. So now it's really just doing the work with time and energy. I guess because there's no creativity or hard, intense brainstorming, I can listen to a podcast. I can listen to music. I can watch TV. I can watch movies while I work. While it may not be the most fun or exciting part of the project, you know that if you just keep moving forward and you keep doing the work, you're going to get the project done eventually. Now, why is it important to be aware of these two things? I like to see them as gears in a machine or a device. Now, have you ever heard of the term switching gears? It basically means doing something entirely different. And switching gears is not easy because it requires you to switch to a different mentality or a different strategy or a completely different way of working or a completely different discipline. It takes time to switch gears. Sometimes it takes a lot of energy just to switch gears. From my experience and from my perspective, people who tend to switch gears all the time at high amounts and breakneck speeds tend to get burned out faster. Let's talk about story artists or storyboard artists in animation. Being a story artist or storyboard artist in animation is a highly creative and laborious job. It requires you to think about how to tell a story in the best way, but at the same time requires so much work. The ones that I notice that get burned out faster are the ones who try to polish their boards on the first get go, you know, fully animating their storyboards, adding tones and shadows, but not having figured out the roadmap or the planning of that said storyboard sequence. 
And by the time they have to figure out the next sequence or by the time they have to do another scene, they're tired from all the work that they did on the previous part. And by the time where they go back to the creative and brainstorming stage, they'll probably realize, oh crap, the thing that I did earlier does not work and I just figured out how to do this properly. And then they go back and redo some work. But then the storyboard artists who do very loose, very crude thumbnails of just trying to explore or figure out what the scene is, and they do this for all the other scenes that they have to deal with, they spend as much time as they can on that stage first. And once they've figured out the overall roadmap or skeleton of that sequence, it's really just labor work at that point. They can switch gears and they can just clean up the drawings, they can polish up the drawings without having to go back and brainstorm and try to figure out what the work is all about. It's just a matter of spending more time on it and getting the thing done. And sure, they may go back and fix some things. Sometimes they'll realize a thing that they had earlier doesn't work. Most of the bulk work of the creative process or the creative thinking has already been figured out and solved. And by the time that storyboard artist is done with that sequence, they're not as burned out. So what I'm trying to say is, again, from my experience, the less gears I switched, the less I jumped back and forth between the creative stage and the labor stage, the less I felt taxed out, both mentally and physically. So I'm just going to give quick examples. For animation, the creative process is coming up with the best acting choices, the best poses, the best choreography, making decisions, moving forward with a certain choice, eliminating another choice, and then laying it out as really rough scribbles, really rough shorthand, something that just resembles the idea. The labor's part for me would be, let's say, tying down the drawings so they look more on model, they look solid, cleaning up the drawings, eventually coloring them. At least the roadmap is all figured out. When I think about drawings and illustration, I just do really rough drawings and sketches of how I want the image to look like, an idea. Maybe I'll make multiple doodles and drawings and sketches and save them somewhere so when I come back to it, I've already figured out the creative part, I can just polish up the drawing, color it, wrap it up. Okay, what about when it comes to writing? For me, I always write and start with bullet points. Ideas I want to tackle, even if it's not organized yet, at least I've written it down. Then I'll probably organize it, categorize it. The labor's part for me would be to make it proper, put it in a format, maybe use formal language if I need to, put it in a proper structure. What about when I do comics? I'll write a very rough version of what the dialogue looks like and I'll thumbnail in really small drawings what each page looks like, laying out the characters, the staging, where the captions are. The labor's part would be cleaning up those drawings, coloring it, fine tuning it, and just basically polishing whatever roadmap I already have. So why is this stuff pretty important to know? And I can think of three good reasons. The first one is that it helps you understand your process better. What parts are heavily creative, what parts require the most decision making, and then eventually what parts are just laborious where you can shut your mind off and just do the work. The second one is that it helps you plan and sort of estimate a schedule. And this is where the whole marathon element comes in, especially when I did films back at school where we spent a whole year making our student film. The first semester is usually spent trying to figure out the type of film that you want to do, the subject matter, and the story. There's a lot of rewriting, exploration, and even experimentation, and sometimes you change your mind a lot of what kind of subject matter you want to tackle. The second semester is usually spent on finishing the film. You figure out your story, you figure out the thing that you want to do, now it's just trying to get the production going on and trying to just get it through the day. Sure, there's some brainstorming or heavy decision making that you might have to make here. There's some creative work that you might have to do here, but the roadmap and the core idea that you want to tackle is already figured out. And I guess the third one is trying to come up with a strategy that works best for you, especially if you're handling multiple assignments or multiple projects. So let's say I'm working on three animated projects. I want to have the writing and the storyboards done for each of them. I'm not even going to animate them until all three of them have a lockdown storyboard and the writing is already done. And then I think it also helps if you think about your whole process of your production and try to figure out what parts are creative and what parts are laborious. What parts do you enjoy and what parts do you not enjoy and how can you sort of minimize the things that you don't really enjoy and maximize the things that you do enjoy. So here's an example. Let's say I'm making a project and I decide I love the creative elements to it. I don't like the labor's part to it. I could just make a black and white film that has very little in-betweens or very rough and loose drawings, but the ideas and the story is really tight. It's there and I want to spend way more time on that and very, very little time on the things that I don't enjoy, which is the labor's part. 
that's just an example or vice versa where you know you want to come up with an idea very quickly you don't really care if it's the most amazing thing you just want to be punctual in that decision and just spend all that time and energy just making it the most polished thing that you can imagine and I think once you become more aware of the creative parts and the labors parts of your project and you play around with strategizing and how you want to go about it the better you get in handling yourself from preventing further burnout. One of the main contributors to why the Dusk Flight project took me forever just to get done was because I kept changing my mind, I kept changing the direction of the project, I kept changing the overall story I wanted to tell, I kept changing the creative part of the project. And I got burned out because I kind of psyched myself out from realizing the project was so big, but that's also because I kept switching gears from the labor side of the project to the creative side of the project. I realized by the time I wanted to finish the project, whether it turned out great or terrible, I knew I had to make a roadmap. So I made an animatic or I added some storyboards of scenes that I just wanted to finish. I just animated and colored that scene. I replaced my storyboards with those scenes and it was done. Now, after that, I decided to do really dumb casual shorts. I did those as storyboards and timed it out as an animatic first. And I was just replacing unfinished scenes with animation. And I managed to get things done. The question you might want to ask for yourself, especially if you're a creative person and you want to make your own stuff, your own projects, your own productions, your own little ventures. You kind of want to think about what part of my project requires the most critical thinking, the most decision making, the most problem solving, the most involved in trying to figure out what you're trying to do with this project. And then ask yourself what part of your project is just work, is just labor, meaning that if you just keep doing the work, you just keep moving forward with it, you will get it done. When it comes to my own personal productions, I try to figure out the writing and the storyboards first. So when you watch it, at least the jokes land, at least the story is there, the general idea and essence of my project is there. And as I move forward to the next stages, the more laborious it gets. So I start with the rough animation. It's still creative. It's still experimental. And then when I move on to finally cleaning up that, it's really just a matter of time and moving forward. And I don't really have to think too much about figuring out what the project is all about. It's already figured out as a rough storyboard that I whipped out earlier. Another thing that you could try to do and why knowing about these two different things is pretty important is so that you can understand your own pipeline. What are the necessary steps you'll need to do to get a project done? So you could try making a chart that showcases what steps you need to do to complete your own projects and see what parts are really creative and what parts are entirely laborious. So one question that I also want you guys to think about is what could you do to make your life easier for the next day? as you work on a creative project, whether it's for work or whether it's for yourself. Now for me, I tend to work better when I tend to switch gears less. I like to figure out the idea and the roadmap before I move on to the labor side. Or sometimes if I don't really have an ongoing project and I just wanna do things for fun, I'll just brainstorm ideas or do really rough sketches of ideas and things that I have in mind as like really rough drawings and doodles. And then maybe the next week I don't start new ideas. I don't start new projects or doodles. I just work on top of the sketches that I did the week before, cleaning them up and polishing them. Now, there are some people that prefer to switch gears all the time, but I realize that that's not who I am. If it is you, and I know there are some people who prefer that, you know, that's great. But I think that for me, I just wanted to talk about how being aware of the creative stage of a project and a labor stage of the project, it may help you plan things out and strategize and maybe schedule things. Anyways, that's all I wanna talk about, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.